Hello and welcome. I am Erin Capazera and I am here with Dara Lee to talk about connecting with kids in the kitchen. We are both ambassadors with Katie's Mission. Katie's Mission is a nonprofit organization that helps to end the stigma around mental health and suicide. They are dedicated to offering life coaching scholarships to individuals who need it at no cost to them and also assist families pay for funeral expenses when a suicide loss occurs so that they can grieve and not worry about the unexpected financial burden. Derek, can you please share with us a little about yourself and how you began your love for cooking? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Dara Lee, and I grew up in upstate New York with a pretty large family, four brothers and a sister. As a girl, it was just expected that I was going to help in the kitchen. I was When I was young, I didn't say no to my mother. It's just the way things were then. <laughs> she said, go come to the kitchen. I went. You know, my mom, she always cooked from scratch, which now I can totally appreciate because I love cooking just fresh, you know, food from scratch. I'm not one to use, you know, packaged items. And I learned a lot of lessons um, from my mother in the kitchen. And um, as I raised my own children, I was really kind of busy building my career, you know how it is, and you know, running the children around and probably didn't have as much time in the kitchen as I wish I had. But, you know, we did spend some time in the kitchen and now that my daughter has grown, she's got her own children, she loves to spend time in the kitchen um, with her kids and they love helping her. So that's really exciting. And as a teacher, I, I became a special education teacher. And as a teacher myself and many of my fellow teachers, we use the kitchen a lot with our students um, because there's a lot that you can learn in the kitchen. And so I just decided to do a little bit of research to say, hey, you know, how good is this for kids? And I kind of, you know, really cooking in the kitchen is great for kids. Why should we introduce our children, our grandchildren to cook you? Well, you know what, Erin, there's so many lessons that can be learned in the kitchen. And I guess number one is it's just a, it's a life skill to learn how to cook and to be able to, you know, put ingredients together and actually make a meal that you can eat. Um, we all have to eat uh, at least two or three times a day. So being able to prepare that yourself um, is huge. And so we might as well start our kids when they're little. And there's so many, and maybe it's the teacher background in me, but there's so many skills that kids can learn in the kitchen. And, you know, besides just being together is one of the really important things is, is spending that quality time in the kitchen. But, you know, kids learn how to measure, they learn how to scoop, they learn how to stir, they learn how to um, roll out cookies. I mean, it's great for little ones um, that are just trying to develop those fine motor, those, you know, hand coordination skills, because even just pouring ingredients into, you know, the bowl is great skills for the little ones. And um, there's math, of course, you know, you have to figure out, you know, um, if you you can put in fractions without kids even knowing. You want a half a cup, a quarter cup, you know, you look at the measurements, you learn how to match those up. So there's always math. Um, doubling a recipe is a great way to throw in math. We always used to do that when we were making Christmas cookies because we had to make tons of Christmas cookies. So, you you know, you double the recipe and you figure out instead of, you know, two eggs, how many eggs do we need? Oh, we need four eggs. You know, th those are just like just a part of the activity and kids don't even realize um, that they're learning. Uh, problem solving, you know, if maybe you don't have one ingredient, how do you problem solve that? Can you figure out how to you know, switch it out for something else. Um, things as simple as um, cutting skills. And again, you know, you want to make sure the kids are a little bit bigger, but you can use um, kitchen scissors is a nice way to cut things. And if you've never used kitchen shears, um, that's a good way. Or tearing, you know, kids can tear the lettuce if they're not ready to use a, a knife yet. So there's really just a lot of skills and when kids are ready to try to find their own recipes, you do a little research. You get on Google and you start, you know, researching. So um, figuring out what ingredients, making the grocery list, actually going shopping. So there's so many different skills involved um, that you can incorporate into the kitchen that um, it's really, I just think, uh, just such a great activity for kids. At our house, we love, um, I love incorporating math and science. There's a lot of fun science projects that are, revolve around food as well. Absolutely. So Absolutely. yes, I, I also try to sneak in those 
infractions before, especially before the kids were exposed in math class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they get used to it as they see it. Yeah, so it doesn't become scary for them, right? It's just, yeah. Yeah. They associate it with brownies instead of a math book and a piece of paper. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> what is your advice on the best way to get started? Where do we start? So I think the best thing to do is to make sure that one, you need to know your kitchen is gonna be a mess. Okay, when little kids are cooking, they're gonna make a mess. Flour's gonna spill, eggs are gonna spill, milk is gonna, you know, so just know that going in, that, you know, it's gonna be a mess and it's okay. So make sure that you have time. Like don't, don't start, you know, activities in the kitchen when you're kind of cramped for time. So like, if you know you gotta get dinner on the table, in you know 30 minutes and get out the door to get to the ball game that's not a good time you know to bring the kids in the kitchen you know maybe on a, you know, a saturday or sunday afternoon or you know in the evening whatever when you have plenty of time so that the kids don't feel rushed you don't feel rushed you don't get anxious about it um so that it, it really you just want to make it a fun connection time you also want to start really simple um, you don't want to start like with any kind of complex um, recipes. You know, I think pancakes is a really fun thing to make on a Saturday morning when you have the time. It's really simple. You know, if you use, you know, even if you use, you know, flour, a little baking soda and some eggs, or if you use like a pancake mix, you just add some water to. Um, it's really simple and they can measure it out. They can stir it. and. If they're old enough, they can help pour it onto the, onto the griddle or they could be standing on a chair watching you, you know, pour it on so they can, um, you know, actually be a part of it. You know, another thing that I think is really important when you're starting, especially when the kids are little, is to make sure um, they're using all their senses. So have them smell the ingredients, you know, have them taste a little bit. You know, if you're going to put lemon in something, you know, have them taste a little bit um you know touch it feel it um and then when you're cooking listen you hear it you know sizzling on the stove that's the you know that means there's heat there and it's you can incorporate your safety lessons in there to make sure that they know that the stove is hot and you know those kind of things so um all of those things i think is what's important um when you are ready to start I love those tips, especially if you have kids that don't like certain textures of certain foods or certain tastes. I yeah. wish I would have thought of that years ago, but now I'm going to incorporate that. So yeah. Thank you. Yes. It sounds so basic now that I hear you say it, but it's like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Sure. What age can children begin in the kitchen? I think, you know what, as soon as they ask and as soon as they're interested in, you know, coming in the kitchen, even toddlers, there's things that toddlers can do. They can certainly stir. You know, they love to stir. Um, they can help hold the hand mixer if you're, you know, mixing. They can help pour. And again, you know what? If they're pouring the ingredients and it doesn't all end up in the bowl and some of it ends up on the count, that's okay. You just got to go with the flow. And, you know, maybe you have to add a little bit more. But really, there's a lot of things. Um, uh, they can help make cookies you know use like little cookie cutters and it really doesn't matter what they look like if they don't look exactly like um the cookie you know cutter they kind of swoosh it around and it gets kind of lopsided you just want to tell them it looks great anyways um you um probably um you know as they get older like a three to five year old um loves to like push the button so definitely have them help you know push the blender and usually hear it whirl and maybe hold on the top so they can feel it you know those big ninja blenders yeah so it gives you um again that vibration and whatnot um another you know fun thing to do with uh, kids in the kitchen is having them each make their own pizza so they can add their own ingredients you know they decide what they want to put on it. it's going to make them want to um eat it even more um, Makes dinner prep and planning a breeze too. I yeah, love doing absolutely. That. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So I, I think I started talking about, you know, different tasks for different ages and maybe I was jumping ahead here a little bit. But, um, you know, I think it really depends on the child. Um, you know your child better than anybody else. So when they're ready, that's when it's time to start. Like I was reading some articles and it said that they should not, 
you know, stand at the stove until they're eight years old. Well, you know what, some kids younger really want to be there, want to be a part of, you know, stirring what's happening at the stove. And if if you're there with them and you know that they understand that the stove is hot and they can be safe, then a five year old could do that with your supervision. You don't necessarily, you know, so I don't think there's a specific age when they're ready. I think you as the parent will know when they're ready um, to do those kind of things, you know. Um, Definitely, you know, you want to progress as they get older, they, you know, can be reading the recipes to you, um, can writing out the grocery list, all those kind of fun things. They can do more measuring, really depending on the on the child and, and just, you know, stretch them a little bit as much as they're ready to be stretched, you know, and, and just keep adding, making things a little more complex as long as you start simple. And then, you know, if they're having fun in the kitchen, then make it a little more challenging for them if, if that's what they want. But if they just want to keep it simple, keep it simple. Go with your child's, you know, you know your child, you know what they, how much they can handle. You. How do you decide what's the best recipe for your kids or your children? I think you decide by what they like to eat. <laughs> Start there. <laughs> you know, they like tacos. It doesn't matter. You know what? If they want to make tacos every Saturday, because that's what they like to eat, let them make tacos every Saturday. You know, at some point they'll outgrow the tacos and, and they'll, you know, grow into making something else. But uh, again, I think it's just um, important that we really honor the children. And that's what it's about is honoring, you know, what it is that that they want to do and we just are going to support them. I'm going to say one thing that I really found and, you know, doing a little research in this is that kids, when they cook in the kitchen, there's a few things that happen. And one thing that happens is it really helps to build their self-esteem because here they started with, you know, just a bunch of ingredients and then they actually created food, a meal, something that the whole family can sit and enjoy, you know, and that makes them feel really good. I mean, I know when I make a really good meal and people are like, ooh, this is really good. It feels good. So, you know, I'm sure for an eight-year-old that made the tacos and here, you know, here, daddy, look, I made you tacos that, you know, um, they feel really good about it. So whatever it is, um, I think it's just important that you're cooking things that they want to cook, that they want to eat and they want to be a part of. I love that advice. That would be very fun to just assign a day of the week for each child and this is the day you're cooking and what do you want? Yeah. Neat. A great tip. Cool. What if, this is a great one for me, because one kid loves to cook and the other child doesn't want any part of it. So what if your child has no interest in cooking? What do you do? So what I would do is not try to encourage them to cook. And what I would do instead is is try to encourage them to get in the kitchen to do a science experiment. Did you ever put vinegar and baking soda together and see it explode like a like a lava, you know, like a lava mountain? So let's do, yeah, let's do the volcano thing. Yeah, so that's really fun. Making different kinds of Play-Dohs. There's all kinds of Play-Dohs um, recipes. Yeah, you can just Google it and if you can, you know, you want to add color or you want to add some essential oils for some scent to it. And then they just play with the Play-Doh and, you know, or um, Ooblick. My kids used to love to make Ooblick and you're looking, so you, you're not sure what Ooblick is. Not at all. Tell me. It's a Dr. Seuss thing, but um, Ooblick came from the sky, whatever. But um, it's cornstarch and water. And you just mix it together and again it makes it fun if you add a little you know color to it if, if a kid is not really interested um or um not really interested you know in in cooking there's those science kind of things but then also art with food use food to create art i had a teacher once who every week she would do a fruit of the week activity and so she would she would buy some kind of strange fruit and again you know she would cut it up and they would they would first try to get they would uh, reach into a bag and try to guess what it was you know and then she would take it out of the bag and explain what it was and cut it up and you know they would touch it they would smell it and then she would you know they would make like prints like you did remember i make an apple prints as a kid you put paint on the apple you know and you make apple prints. so you could do that with all kinds of food and um you know then then you're kind of, you know, 
you you do it in the kitchen because it's food. You're playing in the kitchen with it. It just kind of gets you into the kitchen without having it to be something that you know they have to eat. Just fun. and they they start to associate food with fun too. Yeah, yeah, love that. Cool. We're definitely going to try the science project this summer. All right. It's a fun way to sneak some school in without the kids realizing they're there doing you go. school. But remember, it's going to make a mess, Erin. I know. Thank you for preparing me. I know you were speaking to me when you said, be calm, be patient, let them make a mess. Yeah. But I'm getting better at that. Good. They know that. Good. Anything else? This was wonderful advice and tips. Thank Great. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, no, you know, I, I just think again, um, oh, I do, I do want to end with this because I, I spent the couple of days with my grandchildren this past weekend. And so I said to my granddaughter, who's eight, almost nine, I said, so tell me, you know, what is it that you like about cooking in the kitchen with mommy? And she says, well, I love it because I can try new recipes. I try new foods. And that is, that's true. It's, it is also true that Children who get involved in cooking um, do tend to eat healthier and try a wider variety of, of foods. So that's really good. But she ended it with, and I like spending time with my mommy. So that was key. So that's really the whole point of it. You know, just spending that quality time doing something fun and doing something that, you know, that's that builds those life skills and it builds so many skills, but you're having fun. It's not like doing a lesson. It's just having a good time while incorporating all of that stuff. And it's not a chore either, which is nice. Right, right. It's, it's something that has to get done. Genius. Yes. Cool. Love that, how sweet. Mental Health Awareness Month. Katie's mission would love for you to join us for our Mental Health Summit on Tuesday, May 24th. There's going to be speakers all over the world to help you with your challenges, and Dara is going to be one of them. So Dara, will you tell us what you're going to be talking about on the 24th? Sure, Erin, um, I'm really excited. I, I do want to just say that I am so excited that I found Katie's mission and I've been able to be a part of this. It's just such an important mission. And, um, you know, just glad that I jumped in here when I did. And so the talk I'm gonna have is, does food really affect our mood? And it really does, and it's a, it's it's not probably what you what you think because we often think of that comfort food is going to make us feel good. But come listen next week, and I'm going to explain all of that to you. <laughs> okay, no spoiler alert. No. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, and okay. thank you all for out there for joining us. And we're looking forward to seeing you at the summit on the 24th. Thanks a lot, and bye bye, Erin. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.